Well, good afternoon and thank you for watching. My name is Floris Schreuder and I work as a neurologist at the Department of Neurology at the Radboud UMC in Nijmegen, the Netherlands. I would like to thank the organizing, organization of the Ideal Symposium for inviting me to discuss the DIST trial, which aims to study minimally invasive endoscopy guided neurosurgery for patients with a spontaneous intracerebral hemorrhage. I have no relevant disclosures. And first, I would like to start to introduce to you the study group of the DIST trial and indicate that neurologists and neurosurgeons from nearly all Dutch hospitals with neurosurgical facilities are working together in this trial. And you see the team. So intracerebral hemorrhage, or ICH, uh, accounts for approximately 15% of all strokes, but it's the most severe type of stroke. At one month, about 40% of patients with an ICH have died which is a very poor prognosis and hasn't changed much over the years due to a lack of effective treatments. As a result, the burden of disease is very high, even higher than that for ischemic stroke. As mentioned, the treat treatment options for, uh, for ICH are very limited, despite multiple trials investigating treatment options. Surgical treatment aimed at reducing the hematoma volume has not been proven effective. However, Early surgical, earlier surgical trials have mainly studied, studied open craniotomy, which may result in secondary damage, and nearly all trials have initiated surgery rather late after symptom onset. For example, the latest trials, in the latest trial, the MISTI-3 trial, it was 58 hours um, after symptom onset. And we believe time is brain for patients with an ICH, as well as it is for patients with ischemic stroke. Therefore, we have initiated a non-randomized pilot study, study called the DIST pilot study to investigate whether early minimally invasive surgery can effectively uh, and safely reduce hematoma volume in patients with an ICH. We have included 40 patients who underwent surgical treatment at three different hosp hospitals. At the same time, we've include, we aim to include 120 matched patients in seven hospitals to allow to estimate the effect of surgery on fun functional outcome. The latter part of the pilot study is still ongoing, so I can't present any results of this pilot study yet. Here you can see how the surgery is performed. On the left side, you can see that there is a small burr hole uh, performed in the skull through which an endoscope is introduced into the hemorrhage. And on the right side, you can see the different steps of the surgery in which the hematoma is removed step by step. And you can also identify the vessel which is ruptured and if, if present, treat any active bleeding. So if proven safe and technically effective in the DUST pilot study, we aim to continue studying the effect of this technique in a randomized phase three, phase three trial to determine whether the intervention can also improve functional outcome in patients with an ICH. For this RCT, we will randomize 600 patients between surgery or standard care at the same 10 hospitals which are included in the DIST pilot study. And we intend to start this RCT in the fall of 2021. So onto the challenges we are facing in the design of the DIST RCT. Um, and items I would like to discuss with you are the following. First of all, what to decide on patient selection. For the pilot study, we have included a very wide range of patients, both uh, severely affected patients as well as mildly affected patients. And this might affect the treatment results. On the other hand, using very stringent inclusion criteria might hamper the inclusion rate and as a result could potentially harm the RCT. So secondly, we would like to minimize the number of patients that cross over between treatment arms. In the pilot study, it was rather easy because surgery was only performed at three centers, whereas in other seven centers, um, control patients were included. How to ensure that treatment um, crossover is limited once we move to the RCT. Then thirdly, one of the things we've noticed is that it's important to train the surgeons who perform this treatment. And we are struggling how to um, train these at the site that haven't yet performed surgery. So what's the effect of the learning curve? Uh, how should we evaluate the learning curve? And should we exclude the first few patients that are surgically treated from the RCT analysis? And fourthly, due to a poor prognosis and lack of effective treatments, ICAs, ICH is surrounded by therapeutic nihilism. So how to motivate neurologists and neurosurgeons to consider patients for novel treatments? 
Well, we've already performed an online questionnaire last year in which 70% of the neurosurgeons and 80% of the neuro neurologists in the Netherlands indicate that they are willing to randomize patients into a new trial. And lastly, like I've already said, time is brain and it has been clearly shown in ischemic stroke trials. As a result, novel ischemic stroke trials have used deferred consent when including patients. This means that patients will be randomized after eligibility is verified, but in the acute phase, no formal consent is asked. Once the treatment has been performed, the patient or relatives are approached to consent to their um, sharing of data uh, for the trial. And this uh, speeds up the inclusion uh, process quite, quite remarkably. Um, but there's quite some reluctance to actually also do this for patients who have an ICH. Well, I'd like to thank you for watching this video and I hope to see you at the ideal conference and discuss your views on our trial. See you there.